welcome you all dear students in this video i am explaining about 5 marks and 10 marks questions with answers in the chapter number 2 of history subject in first pc first answer in 15 to 20 sentences for 5 marks answer in 15 to 20 sentences question number 1 How was the earth's crust formed? How was the earth's crust formed? Introduction. Evolution of the earth is an ongoing process. It has never stopped since its origin. Earth is one of the planets in the solar system. So the evolution of the earth is an ongoing process. It has never stopped since its origin. Earth is one of the planets in solar system earth is said to have been formed at least 4.5 billion years ago earth is said to have been formed at least 4.5 billion years ago the temperature was so high that the earth was a white hot mass of melted rock it witnessed frequent volcanic eruptions and large collisions the temperature was so high that the earth was a white hot mass of melted rock it witnessed frequent volcanic eruptions and large collisions the earth remained in the molten state for many million years and then began to cool the earth remained in the molten state for many million years and then began to cool the volcanic activity also reduced considerably the volcanic activities also reduced considerably in this way the large number of developments have taken place on the earth the gradual cooling of the earth made the outer side to become solid rock which is called earth crust the gradual cooling of the earth made the outer side to become solid rock which is called earth crust further cooling made the earth crust to contract resulting in the formation of mountains and valleys further cooling made the earth crust to contract resulting in the formation of mountains and valleys they are like folds and wrinkles appearing on an apple which is left to dry for a few days they are like folds and wrinkles appearing on an apple which is left to dry for a few days the gases released by volcanoes created the primary atmosphere the gases released by volcanoes created the primary atmosphere the crust was still hot and water was in the form of steam the crust was still hot and water was in the form of steam further cooling condensed the steam to form clouds further cooling condensed the steam to form clouds and then the rain began to pour in the torrents so in this way the clouds and rains had begun and it on the crust of the earth this continues down pour formed lakes rivers oceans and seas this continues down pour formed lakes rivers oceans and seas the rains and winds eroded the valleys and mountains the rains and the winds eroded the valleys and the mountains this erosion formed rocks to break and form tiny particles of sand and mud so it the soil erosion formed rocks to break and form tiny particles of sand and mud the continuous erosion formed soil and the ocean floor in this way the continuous er erosion formed soil and the ocean form in this way the earth crust was formed then the next one question number second 
How was food and shelter responsible for human evolution? How was food and shelter responsible for human evolution? First one, that is the introduction. Food and shelter are considered very important factors responsible for human evolution. Food and shelter are considered very important factors responsible for human evolution. The growth of food and shelter can be classified into three stages. They are as follows. Relating to the human evolution, the factors like food and shelters responsible in three stages. They are as follows. The hominoids lived on trees. In earlier days, the hominoids lived on the trees. The trees provided them protection from the predators. The hominoids were food gatherers. They procure food by gathering seeds, nuts, fruits, berries, tubers, etc. They were not meat eaters. The hominoids lived on trees. The trees provided them protection from the predators. The hominoids were food gatherers. They procured food by gathering seeds, nuts, fruits, berries, tubers, etc. In this way, the hominids were not meat eaters. But the hominids began to adapt to land. They began to adapt to land. The change in the climate made man forced to come on the land to procure food. For getting food, man forced to come onto land. Then they adapted to land dwelling. In this way, the hominids began to adapt to land dwelling. The hominids began to use caves and extended stone boulders for safety from the predators and from rain, wine, and the sun. The Neanderthal man was the earliest cave dweller. The shortage of food made them to scavenge for food. The Neanderthal man was the earliest cave dweller. Later, but for the shortage of food made them to scavenge food also. The hominoids and the, ar ar the archaic human species began planned hunting and fishing. The earliest evidence of planned hunting and butchery of large animals is traced two sides. The first one, box grove in England, dated to about 5 million lakhs years ago and Shanzen in Germany, dated to about 4 lakh years ago. In this way, man started to hunting. The planned hunting required developing tools and cooperation from fellow beings. As the animals they hunted were larger, stronger and faster. Planned hunting and making tools stimulated the growth in the brain size. The planning hunting required developing tools and cooperation from fellow beings. As the animals they hunted were larger, stronger and faster. Planned hunting and making tools stimulated the growth in the brain size. The early humans also began to visit places like riverbeds and lake beds had abundant supply of food. For getting food, they visiting river beds and lake beds. They began to erect and build structural shelters by using stone, wood, skeleton of large animals or bones and thatch. In this way, man started to construct their own shelters or stu building structural shelters. In this way, the journey of human species commenced on trees. The journey of human species commenced on trees, continued in cave dwelling, and proceeded to structural shelters. So, began in trees, continued in cave dwelling, and proceeded to structural shelters like modern buildings. The next one, the question number three. What was the role of domestication of animals and agriculture in human evolution? 
the role of domestication of animals and agriculture in human evolution introduction domestication of animals and commencement of agriculture also plays an important role in human evolution following are the important factors or impacts of domestication of animals and commencement of agriculture on human evolution domestication of animals was followed by the commencement of agriculture to overcome the effects of the climate changes the food gatherers and hunters now turns into food growers or food producers so the domestication of animals was followed by the commencement of agriculture it means the domestication of animals was first and later agriculture was started the first animal to be domesticated is generally believed to be the dog the first domesticated animal was dog it continuously hanged around the hunter's can to pick up bones and scraps of meat this was followed by sheep goat cow cat camel and horse the rearing of animals made man a nomad he traveled widely seeking food and water to his animals commencement of agriculture is considered as a revolutionary change in the history of human evolution this was an important aspect of the neolithic age the agriculture was an important aspect of the neolithic age and it is considered as a revolution therefore the neolithic age is also called as neolithic revolution man began to grow various crops like wheat rice millets etc with the commencement of agriculture he began to grow various crops like wheat rice millets etc the practice of agriculture made him led a settled life so he settled in a place because of the agriculture it led to growth of villages and towns the settled life led to growth of villages and towns next the question number 4 what role did bipedalism and stone tools play in the human evolution the first one bipedalism the hominids were quadrupeds the hominids were quadrupeds here quadrupeds means they walked on all four limbs the hominids gradually adopted an upright posture the hominids were quadrupeds but the hominids gradually adopted an upright posture bipedalism was a basic adaptation of hominids the hominids adopted bipedalism here bipedalism means walking or running on two feet walking in two feet or running on two feet is called as bipedalism bipedal motion freed the four limbs it developed precision grip and power grip bipedalism motion helped the development of precision grip and power grip this greatly helped in hunting and defending from predators as hands could be used to make tools and also use them so the bipedalism led to beginning of hands and this development of hands helped to depend from predators walking on two leg also provided a greater long distance vision provided a great long distance vision and helped them to cover long distances without spending much energy in this way bipedalism is also one of the important factors responsible for human evolution 
Second one, tool making. The use of tools is not confined to the human. Some monkeys and apes use stones as tools to break nuts. So not only the men but also monkeys and apes use stones as tools to break nuts. But the use of tools by humans is far more advanced. The oldest known stone tools are the Oldowan stone tools from Ethiopia which are dated to 2.6 million years ago. The oldest known tools belongs to Ethiopia around 2.5 million years ago. Wood, bones and stones were used to make tools. They were mainly used for hunting or defending from predators. The making and use of stone tools were responsible to the evolution of forelimbs into hands and also the growth in brain size. In this way, the making of tools helped the growth of forelimbs and also growth in brain size. The Australopithecus species is said to have first used the naturally available stones as tools. In this way, the Australopithecus species is considered as first user the stone tools but they used naturally available stones as tools. The making of stone tools from naturally available stones and using them is positively identified to have started with Homo habilis. Here the Homo habilis manufacturing the stone tools or reshaping the stone tools. Next one. The question number 5. Discuss the place of origin of the modern man. Discuss the place of origin of the modern man. Introduction. The place of origin of the humans or modern man is a much debated issue. There are two different theories. Relating to the origin of the humans, there are many discussions are going on. Based on that discussion, there are two different theories are identified. They are the first one, the replacement or African origin theory. The replacement or African origin theory. Then second one, the regional continuity theory. The regional continu continuity theory. So the two important theories deals about the origin of man. The first one, the replacement or African origin theory. According to this theory, the modern human species evolved from the archaic species in Africa. The followers of this theory believed that they originated from Africa. Africa with its nurturing Tropical climate consisting of strong wet and dry seasons provided an optimum environment for the emergence of modern human species. Some of them migrated to different regions of the world at different points of time. They originated in Africa and later they migrated to different regions of the world at different points of time. They replaced the earlier human-like species in those regions. They replaced. Therefore, this theory is called as replacement theory. In this way, the profounder of this theory believed that man originated from Africa. The discovery of fossils of the early human species in Africa and the genetically and anatomical homogeneity among the modern humans in all parts of the world are evidences for this theory. Relating to the evidences for this theory, availability of our discovery of fossils of the early human species in Africa and genetical anatomical homogeneity proves that the man originated from Africa. In second one, the regional continuity theory. Regional continuity theory. 
According to this theory, the evolution of different human species from the earlier species occurred in all regions of the world. It occurred in Europe and Asia also as it occurred in Africa. The evolution proceeded at different rates at different stages. The dissimilarities among the human populations in different regions of the world serve as evidence to this theory. The dissimilarities among the human populations in different regions of the world serve as evidence to this theory. So these are the explanations relating to the origin of the modern man. So here I stop my explanations on five mass questions. The next one, part second, answer the following question in 30 to 40 sentences. So at least 30 to 40 sentences for 10 marks. Only one question is then that is discuss the important factors of human evolution. Discuss the important factors of human evolution. Total eight factors are explained in your textbook. So I already told or explained in earlier videos that for 10 more questions you should write compulsorily the introduction and conclusion. Introduction. Evolution of the man is an ongoing process. It's continuous process. It has never stopped since the origin of human life species on the earth. There are many factors are responsible for human evolution. Following are the important factors are responsible for human evolution. The first one, climate change. The cli changing cycles of climate and weather have greatly affected the human evolution to a very large extent. The onset of ice age around 2.5 million years ago covered most parts of earth with snow and there were major changes in climate and vegetation. The changes in climate cha made major change in vegetation and climate. The species which could better adapt to the climate changes and procure food survived and the others became extinct. The species which could better adapt to the climate changes and procure food survived and the others became extinct. The early forms of Australopithecus faced gradual extinction and genus Homo or early man which was better adapted to drier condition or survived. The weather and climate of the earth has played an important role in the origin and evolution and the existence and extinction of the various species. The weather and the climate of the earth has played an important role in the origin and evolution and the existence and extinction of various species. Second one, growth in brain size. Growth in brain size. The human species evolved larger and complex brains due to the environmental challenges they faced. The human species evolved larger and complex brains due to the environmental challenges they faced. The size of the brain in the Homo habilis was 600 cubic centimeters. The size of the brain in the Homo habilis was around 600 cubic centimeters or 600 cc but in the later stages it was only slightly larger than that of chimpanzees it was only slightly larger than that of chimpanzees the homo erectus species had the brain size of 800 to 1100 cc the neanderthal man around 1200 to 1900 cc and the Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens or wise man of today has the brain of 
about 1400 cc in this way the size of the brain improved from time to time the growth in the brain size introduced many activities like improved vision upright posture bipedalism tool making use of fire planned and skilled hunting storing food languages etc in this way the growth of the brain size are interlinked interlinked with all the factors of human evolution these activities help in the development of the brain therefore both are interlinked then third one food and shelter food and shelter a the hominids lived on trees it's already explained in five marks question one second i am explaining here or repeating is here the hominids lived on trees the trees provided them protection from the predators the hominids were food gatherers they procured food by gathering seeds nuts fruits berries tubers etc the hominids were not meat eaters in this way the early human species are lived on trees and also they were not meat eaters or they are vegetarians but in the second stage means the hominids began to adapt to land then they adapted to land dwelling the hominids began to use caves and extended stone boulders as shelters extended stone boulders as shelters these shelters on land provided them with considerable safety from the predators and from rain wind and the sun the neanderthal man was the earliest cave dweller the neanderthal man was considered as the earliest cave dwellers in this way the hominids began to settle on the land then see hominids the hominids are the archaic human species began planned hunting and fishing to the already existing gathering foraging and scavenging techniques the earliest evidences of planned hunting and butchery of large animals is traced in two sites the earliest evidences of planned hunting and butchery of large animals is traced in two sites they are bugs grow in england dated to about 5 lakh years ago then second one shanzen in germany dated to about 4 lakh years ago bugs go in england and shanzen in germany planned hunting required developing tools and cooperation from fellow beings as the animals they hunted were larger stronger and faster Planned hunting and making tools stimulated the growth of brain size. The early humans used places like river beds and lake beds to get abundant supply of food. These places did not have caves for shelter. They began to erect or build structural shelters by using stone, wood, skeleton of large animals or bones and thatch. The journey of human species commenced on trees, continued in cave dwelling and proceeded to structural shelters. In this way, the food and shelters are responsible for human evolution. And then fourth one, bipedalism. The hominids were quadrupeds. They walked on all four limbs. Bipedalism was a basic adaptation of the hominids. Bipedalism means walking or running on two feet. Bipedal motion freed the four limbs. Here, bipedalism means walking or running on two feet. The four limbs gradually developed precision grip and power grip. 
With this, the four limbs evolved into hands. This helped hunting and defending from predators. Walking on two legs also provided a greater long distance vision and helped them to cover long distances without spending much energy. In this way, bipedalism is also influenced or impacted on human evolution. Then fifth one, tool making. The use of tools is not confined to the humans. Some monkeys and apes use stones as tools to break nuts. The process of making and using tools required greater intelligence. Wood, bones and stones were used to make tools. In this way, men started tool making and also used wood, bones and stones for making or manufacturing tools. The making and use of stone tools were responsible to the evolution of four limbs in two hands and also the growth in brain size. I was already told all these factors are interlinked or interrelated. The oldest known stone tools are the old one stone tools from Ethiopia. The oldest known tools were discovered from Ethiopia which are dated to 2.6 million years ago. These old one stone tools belongs to 2.6 million years ago. The Australopithecus species is said to have first used the naturally available stones as stone tools. But the making of stone tools from naturally available stones and using them is positively identified to have started with Homo habilis. I was already explained, Australopithecus species is considered as the first used naturally available stone tools and also Homo habilis is considered as the first species manufactured the stone tools. These are the explanations relating to stone tools. Then sixth one, language. What way the language is responsible for human evolution? Planned hunting required cooperation. So they developed crude communication. With the passage of time, utterances and sound formed language. The development of language was mainly because of the growth in the brain size. The growth of language from the growth of language for humans requires short-term memory. The use of language stimulated the brain to grow. In this way, the growth of brain and also use of language are interrelated. Seventh one, domestication of animals and commencement of agriculture. Domestication of animals and commencement of agriculture. The domestication of animals was followed by the commencement of agriculture. It means domestication was first started and the commencement of agriculture later developed. The humans who were food gatherers and hunters now became food growers or food producers. They had food in the form of domestic animals. They started domestication of animals because for the purpose of getting food. The first animal to be domesticated is generally believed to be the dog. This was followed by sheep, goat, cow, cat, camel and horse. The dogs helped the humans in hunting and guarding his shelter. The rearing of animals made man a nomad. In this way, domestication of animals is also influenced on human evolution. Then, relating to the commencement of agriculture. Commencement of agriculture is considered 
as a revolutionary change in the history of human evolution. This was an important aspect of the Neolithic age. Man began to grow various crops like wheat, rice, millets, etc. The practice of agriculture is not more than 13,000 years old. It made him lead a settled life. This cropped up villages. The villages and towns were foundations of civilizations. In this way, the agriculture is also considered as one of the important factors in the human evolution. Then the last one, eighth one, art. The skill or art of making figurines or painting developed at a late stage of human evolution. Okay? In the last stage of human evolution. Many such artifacts are discovered at many places of Europe, Africa and Asia. But none can be dated earlier than 40,000 years ago. Small figurines or decorated objects were carved out of stone, bone or antler. Use of stone, bone or antler for the purpose of making small figurines. The paintings in caves are generally of hunting or of animals. The paintings are mainly depicted hunting or in of other animals. The paintings were done by using paints of charcoal mixed with water, blood, animal fats, etc. Mixture of charcoal Water, blood and animal fats are used for painting. The artist claimed to have served the aesthetic pleasure or were rituals or served magical purposes. These are the details relating to art. Then, conclusion. These are the important factors involved in the process of human evolution. All these factors are interlinked and played an important role in the emergence of modern human species. In the conclusion, these are the important factors involved in the process of human evolution. All these factors are interlinked and played an important role in emergence of modern human species. Here I stop my explanations on 5 mass and 10 mass questions of chapter number 2. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button. Thank you all.